Well, we know about uh, the history, the history of white folks abusing the continent of Africa. We know about the Berlin Conference where literally they got together and split up Africa and said, well, who's going to take different parts? We know about King Leopold killing more, killing more people. Let me be very clear, killing more people in the Congo than Hitler killed Jews in Europe. We can go on and on and on how the French, how the British, how the United States, all of these countries raped and pillaged the continent of Africa. Now we have the caucasity of Eric Prince, the founder of Blackwater, the largest private military company in the world. He actually said this in a recent interview. All this, all this talk of illegal migration in Europe, in the United States, it ultimately comes down to a contest of what is governance. Who is governed, which countries are governed well, and if so many of these countries around the world are incapable of governing themselves, then, then it's time for us to just put to just to, to put the imperial hat back on to say, we're gonna govern those countries if you're incapable of governing yourselves, because enough is enough, we're done being invaded. Because our own national security risk is at stake. Exactly. National security interests are at stake. You can say that about pretty much all of Africa. They're incapable of governing themselves and benefiting their citizens because the governments there are all about looting and pillaging and lining their pockets and going shopping in Paris instead of actually right, hold making on a their country hold a on. better People better on the land. left are gonna watch this, they're gonna say, wait a minute, Eric Prince is talking about being a colonialist again. Absolutely, yes, enough. Because I, I, you, if you go to these countries and you see how they suffer under absolutely corrupt, made up governments that are just criminal syndicates, the people of Africa, the people of Latin America, a lot of them deserve better. Now, some countries are really getting it together. Look at what El Salvador did. Bukele, murder capital of, 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 of Latin America, he said, no more. Now, El Salvador is safer than Prince William County. And he took Just all south the, of Washington, D.C. He put all, all the, the drug cartel leaders guys in prison. in prison. Ecuador, about to do the same thing. New president there. The previous presidential candidate had been assassinated. But um, uh, new guy gets elected. He announces he's contracted with the same building contractor that they built the prisons in El Salvador, going to build them in Ecuador. The prisoners there, the, the cartels revolt and try to take over the capital uh, in Ecuador a couple weeks ago. So it's not all bad. There's some great governance. I, I, I Argentina. Like, I, I like at Argentina. God bless Mille. I mean, right. Yes. So, but the countries that cannot fix themselves, particularly in Africa, the worst. It's time to think about other governance options because they are clearly not capable of self-government. Ah, the countries in Africa that cannot fix themselves. See, that, that's quite interesting uh, that you would hear Eric Prince say those things because, and y'all do know that his sister is Betsy DeVos, who served as the education secretary under Donald Trump. Uh, this shows that she's an idiot and her brother's an idiot because they don't know anything about American history. In fact, I'm going to use one particular country. Y'all heard me just mention the Congo. There's a book. Great conversation. Go to the Black Table discussion with Dr. Greg Carr on the Black Star Network. And he had a, a phenomenal conversation with Stuart Reed. Stuart Reese is the author of this book. This book is called The Lumumba Plot, The Secret History of the CIA and a Cold War Assassination. Stuart Reed details in this book that Lumumba came to the United States uh, and during one of his visits after he became prime minister. And in a particular meeting, President Dwight Eisenhower gave the order to assassinate Lumumba, to take him out. It is documented by some that this was the first time in American history where a president gave a direct order to take out a foreign leader. 
I don't believe that's the case, though. Uh, so here they are. They get their independence from Belgium. Two months in, the CIA and others work to kill Lumumba. Here you murder, you align with his uh, opponents, you kill him, the country goes into chaos, leads to Mobutu becoming a dictator. Let me say it again. We help put a dictator in office and that country is still trying to gain its footing since it got its independence. What would the Congo look like today? had the United States not aligned with others to take out Patrice Lumumba in the Congo. Hmm, let's go on to some other countries. Uh, folks in the control room, uh, sit, pull up uh, a book called Overthrow. Folks, the author is Stephen Kinzer. And I'll see if I can pull up myself. Uh, Stephen Kinzer, uh, longtime New York Times writer. He wrote a particular book that all of you need to read, uh, and it's called Overthrow. Uh, the book details, it details the 13 examples where the United States directly overthrew other governments. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. 13 different times the United States actually overthrew other governments. Huh. Yeah. What I'm saying is absolutely correct. So here we are talking. Here's Eric Prince talking about these other countries uh, and, and how they now have all of these problems. And uh, we must take uh, these countries over uh, in order uh, to, to, to get them under control because these people can't govern themselves. Yet we, the United States, Play a role in making this happen. This is the book right here, Overthrow, America's Century of Regime Change from Hawaii to Iraq. We can detail, we can detail what took place in Libya. We can talk about what happened in Guatemala. Are y'all aware, Kenza writes it in his book, that the Panama Canal originally was not supposed to go through Panama. That was supposed to go through another country. But the United States told that country, oh, in order for you to finance the canal, you have got to use American banks. The country said, no, nah, we're good. We got a better deal with European banks. So the United States, aligned with the PR company, created this entire story that was alive that there was a particular volcano in this country that had, had, hadn't erupted in centuries somehow could erupt and that will destroy the canal that's how it was built in a canal in fact let me just go ahead and stay on panama noriega was running drugs in panama panama guess who payroll noriega was on the cia's come on do y'all even know where the phrase Banana Republic comes from? The phrase Banana Republic comes from United States and other countries overthrowing governments because the plantation owners control the land. They control the country. So the phrase a Banana Republic comes from, again, the overthrow of governments, the overthrow of governments to aid economics. Let's not talk about Chile. Kinzer details that ITT, one of the first global companies, called the, called the CIA and said, hey, um, We'll pay for y'all to overthrow Chile. They said, hold up, hold up now. We ain't, we ain't really down for that yet. So they told ITT, thanks, but no thanks. They then came back a couple of years later when Allende became the president. Allende 
said, wait, wait a minute. Why, why are we sitting here, uh, all these other companies controlling telecommunications, controlling all of our economics? Alinde says, we're going to nationalize this. America, oh, oh hell no. Whoa, whoa, hold up. You, you, you talking about <clears throat> you going to nationalize all this stuff? That means these American companies not going to keep making all this money? No, nah, hell no. Guess what we did? Call ITT. We overthrow Chile. Got rid of Allende. Put in Pinochet, who killed millions of folks. America did that. I'm sorry. Why were the Iranians so pissed off at us in 1979? The story that we've all been told, the Iranians, come, uh, uh, the Ayatollah, Khomeini, they, the crazy rabbit Muslims, they took over the country, wanted to destroy our freedoms. Mm -mm. See, you can't talk about 1979 and the hostage crisis if you skip over 1953, 26 years earlier. And now you might say, well, Roland, well, okay, well, what happened 26 years earlier? Well, there was a democratically elected prime minister. His name was Mossadegh. Mossadegh said, I don't understand. How is all of this oil ours? And we only get like five to seven percent of the money. Why is uh, British Anglo Iranian oil, now known as BP, how are they taking all the money? So most of the day said, no, <laughs> we keeping our oil to rebuild our country. The British said, oh, hell no, no, you not. Because y'all got to understand, the British economy had been taken. All of that Iranian oil was paying for the British economy. They said, no, you not. Oh, no, you not. But see, the British, y'all, the British wasn't trying to go as far as overthrowing the government in Iran. The United States went, we'll do it. We, we got y'all. So the United States began to distribute flyers in the country, pushing out misinformation in Iran against Mossadegh. Took out Mossadegh, put in a general. The general wouldn't do what America said. We then took the general out. And we then said, here's the Shah. So we put in the Shah of Iran. Put the Shah of Iran in. Then we, our CIA, trained the Shah's thugs. So the Shah's thugs that were beating down on people all across the country, put them in place. Now do the math. If you were 18 years old in 1953, by the way, Iran loved America. Iran loved America. After this, Iran hated America. So you 18 years old in 1953. You 10 years old in 1953. Well, 26 years later, you 36, you 44. So the uprising in 79 can be traced back to 1953. Chavez, when he became president of Venezuela, oh, hell no. Don't you dare nationalize the oil. Company called Citgo. Mm -mm, you ain't doing that. Don't you do that. Y'all, we could run through 
a list of South American countries. I ain't even mention us wanting to take over Cuba. We can run through South American countries, Latin American countries. We can run through African countries. We can go through the Middle East and we will show. Y'all heard in the thing he said, uh, uh, America's national interests. We, the United States. See, this is the stuff they never wanted to teach us in school. One of the reasons why you have instability all over the country is because you had the United States, John Foster Dulles, Allen Dulles. Yeah, Dulles Airport, named after one of them. They were the ones, Secretary of State, running the CIA, and that was American foreign policy. Take your pick, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Panama, Venezuela, Mexico, on and on and on. So all of the countries that Eric Prince is now saying they can't run their country, it's because we, along with the French and the British, destabilized those countries, destabilized the leadership by taking the leadership out, paid for overthrows and coups in those countries, and now we're trying to say, I don't know how y'all don't know how to act, I don't know how y'all don't know how to run your own country, when we the ones who actually created the very destabilization that we're talking about today. And last point, we then took the resources, or we put the clamps on the countries by using economics. Any of y'all read that book? The Diary of an Economic Hitman? How we sat here and saddled many of these countries after they got their freedom with enormous amounts of debt, took over their ports, took control of their treasury and their banks, and now saddled them with massive debt they can never repay. Country gets mad, inflation high, Food prices high, gas prices high, wages low, creates dissension in the country, and now the people in the country are constantly fighting because of the economics, and we are the ones who actually made it happen. In this very short time, I've laid out to you what American foreign policy was for most of the 20th century. And here you have this thug, Eric Prince, who wants to blame the very people for their problems when he does not want to hold accountability for the real culprits of the instability. And that has been the West. Michael Imhotep. You're on mute. I there should there be you on go. Mute. There you go. You're on. You're on. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, you laid out an extensive history dealing with the U.S. and uh, other foreign powers being involved in overthrowing governments of African nations, Latin American nations. Uh, Guatemala comes to mind, 1954, CIA overthrew the democratically elected president uh, to protect the um, uh, interests of the United uh, Fruit Company. Um, and they were afraid that the fruit company would lose land. Uh, you talked about uh, uh, the Congo, Patrice Lumumba, CIA 1961. Uh, we can look at Libya as well. Uh, when you have the U.S., uh, France, and Great Britain, uh, when uh, President Barack Obama was in office, uh, you had a Muammar Gaddafi uh, assassinated, and then it caused instability, even though there were problems in Libya, but it got much worse. There were some good things in Libya as well. It got much worse uh, after he was assassinated. Um, you talked about the Berlin Conference, 1884, 1885, and the, the country that probably got the most from the Berlin Conference was Great Britain. And a lot of this history came out when uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, II uh, died. And it, uh, it, it was talked about how much uh, land and how much wealth uh, Great Britain got because of, uh, of the Berlin Conference. So what we're looking at is uh, a history of colonialism, uh, instability. We can look at the conquering uh, by Spain of various countries, whether it's Cuba, whether it's Puerto Rico, uh, whether it's Argentina, et cetera, and then the continuation of this colonization. So Eric Prince is 
operating in the tradition of a long line of colonizers, going back to Christopher Columbus, okay, who colonized Hispaniola, where Haiti is, who colonized Puerto Rico and Honduras and Panama, Jamaica. A lot of these places where we like to go on vacations were, were conquered by Spain and African slaves were taken in and uh, plantations are set up and European nations are enriched off the back of African people and, and uh, Latinos, et cetera. So, you know, this there should be more um, done to expose what he's talking about. And I guarantee you, if, if Trump gets in office, we, we want to make sure this doesn't happen if, if, if Biden's reelected, number one, number one. But two, if Trump gets in office, I guarantee you Trump is going to try to execute what Eric Prince is talking about. The, um, if you go to my iPad here, uh, you see that it was called, um, Kelly, the scramble for Africa. Uh, yes. And it's where the European conference, again, again, the Berlin conference, 1884 to 1885, where they literally uh, split up the countries. In fact, people don't even realize Nigeria was never a country. <laughs> they, they literally created Nigeria. Uh, I'm going to pull up in a second of uh, that particular history as well. Before I go to Kelly, uh, I did an interview with uh, General Colin Powell, the late General Colin Powell. And I specifically asked him the question that speaks to this very issue. Play it. As what's happening in the Middle East, because I'm talking about leadership. Uh, we weren't alive when this country was founded and there's difficult struggles. And it's bothering me that Americans don't understand that this is what happens in new democracies, where you have this struggle, this fight for leadership. And so your assessment of what's happening right now, I mean, isn't that really what's going on? They're trying to figure, they'll find their way. What's happening right now in the Middle East, and it's, it's sort of reflective of our own democracy. It wasn't easy. You don't just pick up a book and learn how to do democracy. You have to practice it. You have to exercise it. And so when some of these autocratic leaders left in Egypt and Tunisia, Libya and places like that, uh, there's no democracy just ready to spring up. you got to grow it. And you grow it by people believing in their country, by people respecting the new leadership, by different sections of the country coming together and not fight over the spoils. And above all, by creating institutions of democracy, how to vote, law corporate law so you can protect the economy, uh, civil rights that are protected, a free press, the end of corruption. Those are the seeds of democracy. So don't be shocked that we're having this kind of difficulty in the Arab Spring countries because they have to learn how to be Democrats in small d. They have to learn how to govern themselves. And America has an important role to play in helping them learn. We can't do it for them. They don't want us to do it for them. But they want us to help. Just kind of let us figure it out. You be there to help us. We need your help. Mm. Kelly? I'm Powell. Um, and he's absolutely right. But also going back specifically to uh, Eric Prince's comments, which alluded to the notion, the incorrect notion that America is perfect, that if only America would step in and take over and you know, do what we do, everything will be okay. And I, I come back to this question, what are, are you trying to, to mimic over there? Because we are by no means perfect. In fact, the things that we have put onto other countries to do, being democracy, being voting rights, being civil rights, being human rights, we barely have that at home now. So how exactly are you to teach someone else when you don't even know how to apply it to your own governments here, correctly anyway. And I'm not saying that we are as bad as, you know, other countries that are in the baby stages of building their own democracies. But look around us right now as we are preparing for an election. Our voting rights have been gutted. We have virtually... <laughs> or we are very close to virtually having no human rights as, as women in regards to controlling our own bodies. Um, the list goes on. So it, it's not just the, the absurdity of the notion of America should just step in and recolonize. It's the hypocrisy that America is good enough to do that anyway. It is simple. Eric Prince 
wants to plunder and control these countries the same way previous white colonists did. I don't know if that was for me. That's, no, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's for you. That's for you. That's for you. Okay, thank you. I, I didn't hear it, but yeah, yes, I said, I, Matt, first, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I first have to to laud you, Roland, because I think that was a masterclass in history that's necessary for the context. And all I'll add is really kind of three things. First, this is not localized just to um, foreign policy. This is the exact playbook that we see in the domestic side when you have disinvestment of communities, you have plundering of communities, and then once a city or municipality determines that that community is now advantageous politically, which we've seen across the country, they go in and steal the land and they vilify the people who've been live, who are living there despite having underinvested and destabilized the community um, through disinvestment. So the first thing is that, I mean, that there are corollaries on the domestic end, which we see primarily in our black and brown communities across this country. But the second thing is, you know, there's a lot of subterfuge here because not only is it paternalistic, right, and acting like these countries, one, don't have the, uh, the sovereignty and the autonomy to govern themselves, but the reality is there's a race. It's a land grab. I mean, we know that the Chinese are paying or buying one fifth of sub-Saharan um, African exports and are investing in Africa incredibly as they are in Latin America. And I think the reality of it is some of it is a subterfuge to do exactly what you said, a perfect word, plunder, to go in and to try to find a way to get the, the reins over these governments and then take those natural resources <laughs> the way it's been done since time immemorial. And the third point I wanted to mention is I actually happen to be reading right now The Colonizer and the Colonized by Albert Mimi. And if you read this book, which is about um, the colonization of Tunisia and Algeria um, in the 1950s, he outlines exactly what the European powers did in terms of destabilization and not only destabilization, the psychological elements that they used on those they were colonizing to try to make them aspire to assimilation and also hate themselves, to create that um, that tension so that they can go in and take those resources and plunder. So. <laughs> That's all it is. It's a monetary thing. It's a land grab. And it's couched in this. We have to help them because they can't help themselves, despite the fact that the things they're allegedly unable to help themselves from are direct consequences of repeated and concerted efforts to destabilize and plunder. So we're seeing the byproduct of that and the recontinuation of that through the paternalist paternalism to act as though they can't govern themselves, despite having the sovereignty and autonomy to do so. You see, folks, this is why. What we have to do uh, is what I have called the education beyond the education. There's the formal education, there's the informal education. Uh, and so uh, I was pulling up here, and so uh, a, a phenomenal book of Stephen Kendrick, go to my iPad. Uh, I, I read this book here, it's called All the Shaw's Men, an American Coup and the Roots of Middle East Terror. An unbelievable book for you to begin to understand <coughs> what happened in Iran and why the middle folk, these countries in the Middle East feel the way they do about the United States today. Uh, this other book, boom, Bitter Fruit, the untold story of the American coup in Guatemala. Same thing. Uh, you see right here, uh, it says right here, though the events in Bitter Fruit happened almost 28 years ago, there's an intriguing similarity to some of the phrase making of the State Department in Central America today. It is a tale of dirty tricks, the manipulation of public opinion, the smearing of the precious few journalists who managed to dissent what was really going on, and a foreign policy that borrowed more from Doonesbury than diplomacy. It is a fast-paced and well-documented history, a thoughtful and compelling book. I, I, I'm telling, see, I'm, I just want y'all to understand that these things are real. We, we, we can't act like uh, these things, uh, you know, simply did not happen. Uh, I told you about the Dulles brothers. They controlled American foreign policy. Uh, they were the ones who led uh, the Bay of Pigs, and it was Kennedy who fired them. Uh, this book here is also a stunning one. The brothers, John Foster Dulles, Alan Dulles, and their secret world war. It details, again, John Foster Dulles was Secretary of State. His brother was Director of the Century Intelligence, where they literally were sitting here plotting and overthrowing numerous countries. All I'm trying to say, folks, is that when you listen to people like Eric Prince, he wants to be them. 
they want to dominate these countries. They want to control their resources. They want to control uh, their money. That's what's going on here. And we better understand and not just go, oh, that guy's talking crazy. No, it's not. Not when he has military contracts. I'm telling y'all, if you read this book and if you read uh, Overthrow, go back to my uh, go, go back to my iPad, Overthrow just blew me away. I'm telling y'all, you read this, you will begin to understand what happens today. The problem that we have in this country is that when we talk about today, we're not factoring in the last 50, 60, 70 years and more. We're not. So we're just like, oh, what's going on today? Nope. The reasons why many of these countries have instability and have unstable leadership, and it's because in many of these cases, the United States of America played a role in destabilizing these countries.